pounds. So, thank you. In the modern world, few commodities are worth more than art. If the artist's name is right, works can fetch sums that truly make the mind boggle. $61 million. $62 million. If you want to really understand the strange and scandalous affair between art and money, you have to look back 600 years. Last chance. So. In Renaissance Florence, there was a far more shocking collision of market forces and masterpieces. The world's most beautiful art was created in the service of one rich and ruthless family, the Medici. Their money, the Medici turned Florence into one of the most beautiful cities in the world. They were the first great modern art collectors. But their relationship with art was anything but straightforward. All kinds of complicated emotions were involved. Guilt, the lust for power, sexual fantasy. And in the end, they didn't just collect paintings and sculptures. They changed the very nature of art itself and unleashed a monster even they couldn't control. Florence, it's impossible to escape from the Medici. Everywhere you look, you can see their coat of arms, made out of palle, or balls. It's as if they've trademarked the city for eternity. A lot of balls has been talked about, the famous Medici balls. There's a modern myth according to which they're medicine pills. Medici, medicine, not true. The Medici themselves like to pretend that they were descended from a valiant knight who performed heroic deeds and that these were the dents on his shield. Not true. What they actually symbolised right from the start was bezants, coins. They're tangible symbols of the fact that these were men who dealt in money. The family's extraordinary journey began with Giovanni di Bici. Born into poverty, this hard-nosed merchant had a plan to make his family rich. Giovanni set up the first Medici bank in Florence in 1397, which traded on this exact spot. Now, there was nothing discreet or well-mannered about the world of Renaissance banking. These were money traders who carried out their work in public, in the market. Each one of them would call out his best offer of the day. I've got 50 florins to lend you to be paid back by St John's Day. I've got 30 florins to be paid back by Christmas. And each banker would work from his own table, set up in one of the aisles of the market. Banco is Italian for table, hence our word bank. It was a high-risk business. They were going bust all the time. And when they did go bust, they had to ceremonially break their table. Hence, the English word bankrupt. Bancorotto, broken table. The first Medici bank succeeded because it had rules, such as don't lend to royalty. They never pay you back. This was the birth of capitalism and no family prospered more than the Medici. But the Medici were also men of their time, devout Christians bound by church laws. the afterlife teeming with angels and demons was every bit as real to the Medici imagination as the world in which they traded and that gave them a problem because according to the Bible usury money lending was a mortal sin 
gods had decreed that man might save himself by labor. But there was no sweat on the Medici brow because they got their money through interest by doing nothing at all. And as the riches piled up on the, the credit side of their ledger, they were terrified of what lay on the debit side, the threat of eternal damnation. The spectre of hell haunted all Florentines, including the celebrated poet Dante. In his inferno, usurers were depicted in the depths of hell. Why was usury such a, an evil business to be in? Uh, the usurer, uh, in the fullest sense of the term, uh, goes to hell. Uh, he goes to hell uh, because usury offends against the goodness of God. Dante says that the uh, usurer uh, sells nothing. Uh, he, he lends money and expects to be paid more back uh, than what he loaned, uh, but he hasn't given anything uh, for this uh, profit. Uh, he is selling nothing. And when Dante describes the punishment of the usurers in hell, uh, he says that uh, they sit in the seventh circle uh, and their hands are continually moving. Uh, they can't keep their hands still. Um, and that is because in their lives they did nothing with their hands. The church of Santa Maria Novella contains a fresco where the Medici's worst nightmares would have been realized. This is the Strozzi Chapel, painted in the 1350s by an artist called Nardo di Cione to give Florentines a glimpse of the afterlife. the chapel was really famous, it was known as La Cappella dell'Inferno, is because it contains this monumental, extraordinary depiction of the terrors of hell. And in fact, it's the first really epic depiction of hell as Dante had described it. There's one theme in particular that would have struck terror into the heart of a Medici. It's the seventh circle of hell, presided over by an evil-looking winged demon called Gerion, in which were placed blasphemers, sodomites, and moneylenders. The fresco is much faded now, but peer closely, and you can still make out the desperate hands of the usurers under a downpour of fire. But it wasn't all doom and gloom because this chapel is also a vivid demonstration that there was a get out clause for Renaissance moneylenders. According to church doctrine, you could buy your way out of hell. You could purchase salvation by sponsoring a great work of art and architecture such as this. And it was indeed paid for by a moneylender, a man called Tommaso Strozzi. There he is with his wife. And the artist's been careful to paint him, being led by an angel towards the congregation of the blessed. Food for thought for a Medici. Pay for a spectacular work of art and maybe save your soul.